I would like to share a story with you that it was published. It's actually an experiment that was published in 1971. And it was uh, done by Dr. Harry Harlow. Dr. Harlow, if you study anything that has to do with human behavior, he's called Dr. Monkey. And the reason for that is because all his experiments, experiments are done with monkeys. So Dr. Harlow raised baby monkeys uh, made with artificial mothers of two types. Both were construct, constructed with a wire mesh. One of the monkeys was covered with a soft terry cloth, and the other one was hard, was uncovered, but that one that was hard and, un and uncovered had a bottle and a nipple that was dispensing milk. So the harsh mother was the one that had the nourishment for the baby monkeys. So the assistance of Dr. Harlow will come once or twice or three times a day and scare the monkeys. The reason they will do that is the only time that I get to scare anybody at church. So the reason they get to do that is to see and measure their results. So they will look and study what the monkeys will do. So they notice that every time they got scared, the monkeys will run and hug which mother? The soft one or the harsh one? The soft one. How do you know that? So they will go and they will hug and cling to the soft one, not the one that supplied the milk. So when I was reading that, I was like, wow, this has great significance. During times of problems and during times of difficulties that we have, our basic instinct is to go to the soft mother, not the one that gives us food, but the one that treats us right. So then, you know, the scientists decided to change the mothers. Maybe the monkeys just run to the left, and that's why they always cling to the soft one. So they change the mother to the right, and they scare the monkeys. And no matter where that soft mom was in that cage, they will run after her. So then they decided to remove the soft monkey out of the cage, and they will scare the monkeys. What do you think the monkeys did? They just stay in one corner trembling. So I ask you, what kind of people, what kind of people are we? You know, I, we as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, we have the nourishment that the world's looking for, right? We have the word, we have the truth. Now we have to cover ourselves with a terry cloth of softness, of compassion, so that way people can come. You know, one of the things that I would hate to do is that my children, my two sons, will not come home because they don't feel comfortable. Maybe what they're doing, I do not accept, but I love them. And I need to let them know about this, that no matter what they did, I hate what they did, but I love them. We need to make sure that the young people and the people from this church know that we love them. That maybe what they're doing, I do not agree, but I love you. And that's exactly what Jesus came to prove and show the love of his, of his Father. Because the enemy has said that God wasn't just. And Jesus came to show the love of his Father. So we, as a church, we need to cover ourselves with that terry cloth of softness. So that way, we can show the compassion of God, we can show the love that He has, and people will see the light that we have, and that light will show in our life. Now I would like you to uh, accompany me to Deuteronomy 6.5, and that's a hard one for me. Deuteronomy 6.5, and even in Spanish, it's very difficult to say as well. 6.5. And here we're going to see how much, you know, we need to love the Lord and what happens when that happens. You have it? Okay, it says, love the Lord with what? With all your heart. And then with all what? Your soul. And then with? Yes, so we have to love our God with our heart with our soul, and with all our strength. And because of this love of God, when we start loving God with all my heart, with all my strength, 
and all oh my soul, what is going to happen to my neighbor? I'm going to love him as well because love to God equals love to neighbor. And that is the solution that I find is to love God. You know that Jesus is the greatest psychologist. He knows that people are more important than things. He also knows that it's easier to attract bees with honey than, than with uh, vinegar. He also knows that it takes only a few seconds to profoundly hurt someone you deeply love, and it takes years to heal that wound, and it will always leave a scar. He also knows that the best way to change a person is to love them. But that love cannot be occasional. It has to be a long-term experience. That is why children rebel, because they want attention. And if you only give them attention when they behave badly, they'll behave badly so you can, make, you can see that they're there. So we need to have this long-term experience with them and love them because they are our children. Dr. Martin Luther King stated, you cannot drive out darkness with darkness. You need light to do that. You cannot drive out hate with hate. You need love to do that. You know, the light of Jesus is what we need in every corner of our life, and He will shine through us. So what is the solution? The solution is that we need to let Jesus take care of others. We just can't do it. We cannot judge them. We just don't know. Let Jesus do that. Second step, we need to show others the love of Jesus, right? We need to be what kind of monkeys? Soft monkeys. So now I'm asking you to be a soft monkey. So we need to be soft monkeys. Also, we need to learn and meditate every, every day about Jesus and his sacrifice for us. We need to learn and meditate every day about Jesus' love and sacrifice for us. So I was taking a religious class uh, for when I was doing my master's degree. And so I needed two electives, so I took religion one and religion two. And so I asked the teacher, and it was an a online class, and I asked the teacher, how do I get an A in this class? So she said, you need to make a compelling argument, and it needs to make sense. So for the end of my, my uh, the class was five months, so the report that I needed to turn at the end, I decided, because it was about the Bible, the New and the Old Testament, so I decided to show my teacher that Jesus is the Messiah, showing the Bible. But what you don't know is that my teacher was a Jewish teacher. So now, after she disclose that, I'm like, oh no. So how do I make a compelling argument and I convince her that Jesus is the Messiah? So it took me three months, every single day, going to the Bible and looking at Isaiah and going back and forth and reading everything I could find to convince my teacher that Jesus was, was Messiah. You know what happened after three months? I was converted. Because I was a, a Seventh-day Adventist, I grew up in this church. Well, not in the church, but actually in my home, but you know what I mean. You know, I, I was just, you know, I, this is all I knew. So I was convinced of the gospel, but I was not converted. But after those three months of meditating every day about the sacrifice of Jesus and what he did for us and how he came to save us, I was converted. I got an A in the class, but I was converted, which was the most important part. So every day we need to meditate on what Jesus has done for us in his sacrifice for us. Fourth step, we need to spend time with Jesus in our daily devotion. So every day we need to spend time in our daily devotion. And I need to speak next week up, uh, for the youth about intimacy with, with God. And intimacy is your intimacy. You decide when you want to do that. Some people is early, early in the morning, and some people is later at night. So as long as you find that time where you can find that intimacy with God, that's what he's asking us for. And the last step for the solution of this is preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. And that was said by 
St. Francis of Assisi. So we will know that we, people will know that we are Christians by the love and the light that is shining through us. So I would like to end with a story. This is a story of Heather Donovan. She is a runner and she is from the University of Minnesota. In 2008, they, they were celebrating the college track and field championships in Minnesota. The 600 meter race starts and the stadium is packed with students all over the United States and they're excited to see this race. Heather Donovan, with the number 170 in her shirt, she represents the University of Minnesota and her passion is to run. She has trained for many, many years for this race and she is good at it. The 600 meter race is a difficult race because it requires speed and endurance. One wrong step, one slip, and the race is done. You cannot recuperate from it. So the race starts and Heather is advancing and now she places herself in second place. She is, she is in good position and she's just waiting for her moment to advance to first place. Now she starts moving towards first place and the runner behind her steps on the back of her foot. Heather immediately falls and her face hits the face, the, the, the track so hard that, and then the runner jumps over Heather and steps over her hair. The question is, does she have the determination to continue? Is it worth, worth it to get up and arrive last? If you find yourself with your face on the track, will you get up and continue? Let's see what Heather does. Let's watch. Isn't that amazing? That is just amazing. 
So the question that I started this morning was, is your light shining? Now I ask you, is your life shining? You know, what is obstructing that relationship with God? Whatever it is, we need to give it to Him. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter how big or how small or how demanding this thing is or what it is that it is in your life. No, God is asking you to give it up. To give it to Him. Because this thing that is obstructing our relationship with God is allowing us to have this close relationship with Him. So I ask you this morning, I would like to make a call. How many of you are willing to whatever it is, to stand up right now and say, I'm willing to give it to God. Let Him take it. Because I want to have this closer walk with Him. How many of you are willing to do that? Amen. 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 You know, the God that we serve, He can forgive and He can heal and He can clean anything that we have in our life, no matter what it is. We just have to be willing to give it to Him. And that way, He can shine through our life. So that way, we can shine through others. And I ask you, from now on, that we call each other monkeys. And we know what it is. We are soft monkeys. Because this church in New Smyrna is going to be known by the love and the compassion and the safety and security that it brings to the community. So the people that are around know that in here, they can find love. And here they are accepted. And in here they can find Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the love and the compassion that you have shown us. Thank you so much for just allowing us to, to walk closer to you. And thank you for showing us the way to do it. Just like that demon-possessed young man that came to you and you did not condemn him. Just like Mary, that you did not condemn her, even though they were clearly doing things that was not right. We also come to you with our stuff that we have. You know, we may have different things, big and small, dirty, not that dirty. But I ask you that you can clean us so that way our life can shine. That nothing can be an obstacle so that way we can show love and compassion. We also ask you that you can, you know, clothe us with that softness of your love. And justice. So that way, when people come to us, they can see that we have your love and that we can have that compassion. That we are shining because you are our God and you love us. So I ask you that you can bless us every day. Now at this moment, I would like to present everyone that is standing here today. We are standing because we want to walk closer to you. And we also are standing because we want to give it up and we give whatever it is obstructing our relationship with you, we want to give it up. And at this moment, I would like for all of us to say our name, even though you know our name. Just hear our name, Lord. Amen. And we claim that you are with us and that you're able to save us because that's what you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to do. So thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the love that you have shown us. And thank you for giving Jesus to die on the cross so that way we can have eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.